Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Gaston Blanchet. He and a friend are leading what they call a game-changing luggage innovation called Trunkster. You can learn more about the luggage at trunkster.co. Gaston is here now to explain the concept, their recent trip to the Shark Tank, and where they see Trunkster headed. And Gaston, thanks very much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Greg. Let's start with the obvious first question. How is Trunkster different from typical luggage? Trunkster is the world's first and only uh, zipperless roll-top luggage. Uh, so it doesn't use zippers to um, to open and close. Instead, it uses a sliding door um, that gives you quicker access to your belongings. You can open it standing up or laying down. Um, and it also features smart features like a battery, um, a location tracker, and a scale. Where did the inspiration for this come from? My co-founder, Jesse, and I um, are big-time travelers. We've been traveling for, for work and for pleasure for about four years living out of our suitcases. We got to know our, our suitcases um, pretty, pretty intimately through, through the time we lived out of them. Just based on the frustrations we had, we started chatting about that and, and sort of polling our friends. And when we couldn't find the perfect luggage to buy ourselves, we um, sort of took it upon ourselves to take a stab at creating a better one. How did this get off the ground and shift from an idea to a product? It took about um, a couple months that uh, just you know talking about the ideas, um, and then we we started sketching it out. That's another couple months. When we had good enough sketches, we we said, okay, this this seems like it works. So we took it to an industrial designer who sort of uh, professionalized the the entire concept and made actual uh, sketches in a CAD. Um, and then once we had that, the only thing left was financing. So. We said, wow, this, um, after speaking to consultants about how expensive it was to create the molds for this type of hard side luggage, we decided to take it to crowdfunding. And really, that's when everything took off. Uh, we, did, we ran a $1.4 million um, Kickstarter campaign. And you know, one thing led to another. Eventually, it took us all the way to the Shark Tank. How much do you charge for it? We're retailing about around $400, give or take, with basically still finalizing our pricing strategy. But um, yeah, it's around $400. That's a bit more than the typical suitcase cost, so how do you convince folks it's worth that extra money? To clarify, by comparison, other suitcases in the hard side uh, uh, market are actually pretty expensive. If you look at a Tumi or a, a Samsonite Ramoa at these levels, hard side, they can actually go for six, seven, eight hundred dollars okay. um, retail. So we chose the pricing strategy to be comparable with those higher end hard side suitcases. But obviously, you're also buying something new and revolutionary, um, as well as the, the smart features it comes with. So we figure that justifies the, the price. All right, let's turn to the Shark Tank now, Gaston. In watching your episode, it's very interesting. When you first went in, Kevin O'Leary scoffed at your valuation, which he normally does. But the others seemed to agree at first. But eventually, you won them over and essentially got what you wanted. Explain how you were able to reverse that early skepticism. Yeah, that was, was pretty comical how that all uh, went about. But, um, you know, we took a close look um, at previous episodes of the Shark Tank, and we actually um, we had come up with that negotiation strategy of, of basically, um, you know, a licensing deal um, and that, that sort of paying, paying that investment back um, over the course of two years. So we knew that Kevin O'Leary in specific would – would like that he was one of the people to propose that. So um, we sort of were going to use that as our our last ditch effort to to get them to come in our evaluation, and it and it ended up working out. I mean, they all balked at just the flat out giving the money for the investment, but when we broke it down into different terms into the licensing, they all seemed to take a different approach, a different look at it. What's it like to be in the shark tank in terms of atmosphere, the real length of the negotiation, trying to read the sharks? What's that all like? It's extremely nerve-wracking. First off, when you film, you know, you're you're in there for an hour. People don't realize, but we were in there for more than an hour having a bunch of Q&A and, and a whole lot of things they left out um, from the episode that airs, which they only show, I think, about five minutes of your episode. But it's excruciating to wait. You know, we waited hours uh, while other entrepreneurs pitched their ideas. And when it was finally our, t our turn, walking through the, the little entrance was 
it was pretty nerve wracking. Um, and then it's it's a pretty high stress environment. You try to keep your cool while while you know you're defending your your idea in front of these these sharks. You got to deal with Mark Cuban and Laurie Grenier, which is what you wanted. Tell our listeners a little bit about what's happened since you secured that deal with them. You know, those were the two sharks we were targeting, um, especially Laurie Grenier with her experience on QVC and luggage. Uh, she's a very successful luggage seller. So um, with her team, it's been really constructive to, to get ideas to improve Trunkster and our distribution strategy. So um, it's, it's great. We're, we're actually still in the process of uh, finalizing the deal. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of due diligence after the show, and right now we're, we're in the midst of uh, concluding that, that post-show uh, closing of the deal. You secured $1.4 million for 5% equity, but the catch is you have to pay it back in a pretty short period of time, plus royalties over time. So just how profitable do you expect to be in the next few years? Yeah, you know, right now we're actually developing our second um, and third products. Um, so we have some new products on the horizon, which we think um, will do really well based on all the feedback we received over the year. Um, so our, our biggest strategy um, is for these two years to use to use that investment money to to grow Trunkster into a global brand. Um, right now, we've done really well in the United States and, and Europe, the, the typical English-speaking markets. But we want to branch out into um, all the foreign markets so that we can get some some good cash flows going into this uh, into this coming two years. Is this already bigger than you expected it would be, or did you have big dreams from the get-go on Trunkster? Oh, huge! I mean, one can never underestimate um, you know your own ambition. I, I had big plans and then big ideas, but Truly, to see it all come true, I don't actually think I ever uh, would be on the Shark Tank. So it's been really, really exciting and um, just very enthusiastic uh, about where it's going to develop. Gaston, we'll have to stop there. Thanks very much for your time. Appreciate you. Thanks, Greg. Gaston Blanchet is co-founder of Trunkster. For more information, visit trunkster.co. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.